Hey guys, welcome back to Clownfish TV. This is Neon, and I am here with Geeky Sparkles. Hello. And apparently, Disney's Daredevil reboot is so bad, they're already hitting the reset button. They've already fired the head writers. Yes. It's a freaking disaster. And they've hi they fired the directors that were doing the rest of the episodes, too. Yeah, so it's supposed to be uh, Daredevil Born Again. This is more like a Daredevil Stillborn. Oh, um, that's not okay. Uh, I'm just saying, it's not looking too good. That's that's too far. Why? Why? It's a joke. It's a joke. It's not a good joke. It's no, a it's joke. not a good joke. Uh, I shouldn't have made that joke, but I made that joke. So we're gonna we're gonna talk about we're gonna talk about this. Uh, this is not a good situation because they were kind of pinning all their their hopes for the uh, the MCU on Disney Plus on Daredevil. People mm -hmm. were actually legitimately excited to see Charlie Cox come back. Yes, but they were less excited when they found out that Karen Page and, and, and was it Foggy Nelson weren't going to be in the yeah. new show. Yeah. And then we saw the, the She-Hulk and people were like, oh. They nerfed them. Completely. Right. So I'll explain what's going on, but before we get into it any further. Before you get into it any further, please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants. Guys, you get a woohoo if woo you do. Uh, yeah, I have not watched She-Hulk. You've watched some of it. Um, I thought Charlie Cox was pretty fun in Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. I thought it was a nice nod, but the Netflix Daredevil show is, in my opinion, the best Marvel thing, or one of the best Marvel things they've done the entire yes. time that Disney has had Huge Marvel. fan base yes. for that show. So people were very concerned when they heard about you know what they were doing and how who they were and were not bringing back. So if you scroll down here, Let's scroll down. Yeah. So what happened was they said, okay, back in mid-June, if you remember, that's when the WGA strikes were happening and they kept showing up the picket outside the, there and they were shutting down production. Yes. They were shutting down filming. So then that led into the SAG after strike. So they have not been really filming or working on this since mid-June. Well, during that downtime, Kevin Feige took a look at what they had and I guess they had less than half the, the, the episode shot, but about half. Took a look at what they had and was like, wow, this isn't good. And the show, <laughs> what? And the show wasn't working. Yeah. So uh, quietly last month, they turned around and fired the head writers, Chris Ord and Matt Corman. And the directors they had lined up to finish the rest of the episodes of the show. So now they said they're going to try to find new writers and directors. And they're going to keep some of the film scenes and other serialized elements. Corman and Ord are also going to get executive producer credits, even though they're being replaced. The, okay, so that kind of happened with Solo, too, mm -hmm. with uh, Miller and Lord when they got rid of... Uh, yeah, that, and then they, they also mentioned that with the Secret Invasion, I guess that's what happened a lot of that. If you go to the Hollywood Reporter article in a minute, we can look yeah, and talk yeah. about that. So they, they'll give them credit because they worked on the show, but this probably has something to do with the union rules or whatever, like who gets the credit for right. what. Right, but this know. whole changing it out in the middle and then you know trying to save it, they, they did, with, I guess, Secret Invasion, which is why it was so messed up. But I was saying about the fans weren't happy because the choices they made, and then they said this specifically. They said Corman and Ord crafted a legal procedural that did not resemble the Netflix version known for its action and violence. Cox didn't even show up in costume until the fourth episode. What? And then Marvel, after Greenland, the concept found itself needing to rethink the original intention of the show. If you're trying to appeal to fans you have, this is probably not the way to do it. I don't even know how they can follow up season three. Season three was... Awesome. And it ended, you know, a kind of, kind of a cliffhanger, you know, and they could have continued from, I mean, but I guess we're going to make him kinder, lighter, more funny. Yeah. Which is not going to work. I mean, I could, I could see them continuing and be like, okay, uh, both, uh, you know, Matt Murdock and Kingpin got snapped and now they're back and we're going to pick up from where, you know, they were gone during the blip. But again, you would need to be, you know, where's Foggy? Where's Karen? Where's, mm -hmm. Where'd you Where'd know, they go? Where'd they go? Oh, they just they got... They probably just killed them off. Oh, they died. They died off screen. They both got cancer. They both got killed <laughs> by somebody when you weren't there. <laughs> you weren't there. Oh, yeah. Oh, my God. They probably would do that. Probably like, oh, yeah. So Kingpin's... Feel your guilt. Feel it. Let your guilt fuel you. Yeah. So Kingpin's uh, thugs, they they filled the void and then they killed off your or friends. Kingpin was still there and killed your friends. Yeah. Well, yeah. I don't know. I mean, it was probably something stupid like that. Yeah, yeah. They're probably going for like more She-Hulk with the show, which I don't think is the right call at all. More viral TikTok moments. Yeah, they're all going to twerk at the end. They're all going to twerk at the end. They're going to twerk too. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Um, and then we're going to have to make them do the walk of shame multiple times. Uh, it's just, it wasn't going to work. And people were concerned. And they had good reason to be concerned because they got gone for the reasons that people were concerned about. Yeah. Yeah. Uh as soon as people saw the tone, as soon as they started making comments about it being a lighter, funnier show. I mean, people were excited originally about the yellow costume 
Because they're like, okay, that's kind of a nice yeah. nod to have the yellow costume, you know, even if it's just a one-off or whatever. But after after She-Hulk, like, the damage was done. People were like, what the hell? People no, I mean, like, him being funny and jokey wasn't completely off-brand for him, but still. No, but the show has to feel, if you're going to bill it as a continuation of probably one of the best things Marvel's ever put out, you know. Uh, At least you, as a TV show. As a TV show. You, you really have to up your game. Right, you're really gonna have to up your game. Well, yeah, the Marvel yeah. shows we get from Disney are nowhere. They're near. not good. Um, but interestingly enough, if you scroll on this article, I thought it was kind of interesting because uh, the Hollywood Reporter kind of calls them out. Um, so they're talking about everything I've talked about here. Keep going. Oh, this is interesting though. They said they said even though they remain, they said along with Star Wars, the most watched shows on Disney Plus Marvel series have recently faced a number of yes. creative challenges and cries of diminishing returns from critics and audience metrics, causing a major shift at the studio to make. Uh, TV shows the more traditional Which is way. what I was going to get to. If you scroll down here, they're talking about, keep going, um, they're talking here about, uh, they're saying about being behind the scenes. They said that this happened with Moon Knight, but that was because of, uh, and She-Hulk because of the COVID thing. Yeah. And they talked about Secret Invasion. I guess it was supposed to be Kyle Bradstreet, and then he had been working on the scripts, and then he was fired, and they went with Brian Tucker, and they came in and changed everything, which, you know, kind of messed it up. But if you keep going down, they're talking about Marvel's development and how they do things. Yeah, actually, the paragraph right above that is what I was going to talk about. It's like, this is what The Hollywood Reporter is saying, okay? They said that they have not done the traditional TV-making model. It didn't commission pilots, but instead, instead shot entire 150 million-plus seasons of TV on the fly. Didn't hire showrunners, but instead depended on film executives to run its series. And as Marvel does support its movies, it relied on post-production and reshoots to fix what wasn't working, which caused a lot of issues with the special effects workers and the VFX people that were overworked. And then they are leading to unionization and trying to make changes because they were, had too much pressure put on them. And Victoria Alonso got ousted and all this other crap because of their, you know, odd way of making TV. Is is this part of the reason she got ousted? Because they were well, they said part of it was because she wasn't treating the VFX people like shit. Well, yeah, but that, but I'm just saying in general, like they're like, hey, yeah, uh, oh my god, She Hulk, and oh my god, uh, Daredevil. Well, she's the, well, we all know she was the one making a lot of the decisions yeah. that turned out to be dog crap and no one watched. So this is interesting because there's a Hollywood Reporter calling them out. And my next thing is they have like like all these episodes filmed. How much is it going to cost? Because they would have even had directors lined up. They would have had to buy out their contracts and stuff. There would probably yeah. have been cancellation fees and stuff. So how much is it going to cost them to get rid of everyone and hire all new people? And then even though stuff that they can use, they can't. They have to rethink the whole thing. They can't use everything, so they're going to have to reshoot some of it. Measure twice, cut once. Mm-hmm. Okay, get your script nailed down. Run it through the multiple revisions. But this is the biggest problem Disney has just in general, not just Marvel, but also Star Wars and also their other projects. They want to lock dates down years in advance, and they're more excited about flashing a whole bunch of logos up mm-hmm. on the screen and being like, look at all the shows we have coming, guys. Subscribe to Disney Plus, even though the shows are like not done. They're not well, done. Right, but they're they're, not- the, the shows they have have been worse. And it's interesting to me that they've let it go so long when, when shows were not doing well. They didn't do any, make any changes. Now... After Secret Invasion had like the worst, like it was so bad viewership. Yeah. Now they're gonna try to step in and and be better about their shows. They should have stepped in a long time ago when they wouldn't have got train wrecks like Ms. Mar or well, Ms. Mar wasn't a train wreck, but it didn't do well. But like uh She Hulk and stuff like that. It's there's nobody in charge. Kevin I I, I hate well, Kevin Feige's in charge, but Kevin Feige needs to be fired. I'm sorry. He he, he this is this all happened on his watch. You know, same with Kathleen Kennedy. She needs to be fired. Like this, this, you cannot But I think it's a matter of who else are you going to put in? No one else wants the job. Well, yeah, because they'll probably be like, I'll be here for two weeks. They'll fire me too. Yeah, that's a lot. That was the rumor. The rumor was part of the reason Kathleen Kennedy is still there. I do not believe that you cannot fire her. That is, nobody has that kind of, you can fire the president. It takes a lot to do it, but you can do it. They fired Chapek. They fired Chapek. You can fire Bob Chapek. You can fire Kathleen Kennedy. That being said, it might come down to the fact that like Star Wars is such a tainted brand right now, such a hostile, like it doesn't matter who you put in there, it's going to be a disaster, you know? And even if the person has all the best intentions, it you're stepping into a minefield. There's no, yeah, the it's, o- like, it's like the stinky cheese. You don't want to touch it. You don't want the cheese touch on you. Yeah. The only way you could really fix any of these franchises is to let them rest and be like, well, yeah, let's just reset this shit and have an actual game plan going forward and make sure that we put 
quality over quantity. Well, they did initially with Marvel, which was what was great. And then Disney was like, we got we got Disney Plus now. Now we got to milk it harder. And yeah. then they then they just put uh, quantity over quality. And we've been getting, you know, really crappy shows. It's been, you know, the, the, the special effects have been crap because they haven't had time to do it. And they were supposed to fix everything because the directors kept changing their mind. The shows have been, you know, we're, we're in the middle of the show. We fire everybody, we hire it, and then the shows don't make any sense. They're disconnected and they're disjointed. And people are like, what the hell was that? They were going to do the same thing to Daredevil. Thank God. They're like, no, we're not doing that because Daredevil's our one chance. We're going to milk. And- we're gonna milk Daredevil. We're gonna well, milk them hard. There's a lot of people who'd love to line up to milk Daredevil, I'm but you sure, know. I'm sure She Hulk milked them pretty hard. I don't know. Well, she's She Hulk, but you know, there's you know. I'm sure his his I keep shoulders. I keep telling you to get the Daredevil suit, but you don't listen to me. His hips and his shoulders me. were disjointed after. Yeah, yeah after I, the I keep telling you to get the oh. costume, but you don't listen to me. <sighs> I'm taller than he is. I met him. I met him at the Comic Con. He's a nice guy. He's not very tall. Anyway, okay, <laughs> is that your one up? <laughs> okay. I'm taller okay, than he is. <clears throat> you could like him, but I'm taller. I am taller than he is. I wouldn't. <sighs> I would stretch out the suit. I'd ruin the suit. Just get one in your size. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Um. Yeah. The, like. Look, nobody's defending Disney anymore. This is what blows my. Like nobody's defending Disney. And it could be that everybody turned on Disney because of the strikes, because uh, Bob I- Iger became the the poster child for the studios pretty much effectively you know but the the reality well, is designer clothes yeah the reality is is the way that they've been doing things it doesn't work it doesn't work at all you need to you need to you're better off having one good show per year you know versus having 50 shitty shows well this one had 18 episodes too yeah, people were like, oh, they must really have a plan. They have 18 episodes, not a six episode. So so the first like six episodes of the show, they're just kind of puttering around yeah, the he courtroom. Show, he doesn't show up until the fourth season or fourth episode of the suit. It's law and order. I mean, even in MCU. Netflix, he didn't have the suit right away there, but they had him like with the blindfold on and it was yeah. kind of cool. He was proto but, Daredevil. Yeah, yeah, they were setting it up. But now it's been set up. So you don't need to do that again. Now, what's this? It's Marvel TV machine Sheen slowing down um, the graphic right here. If you go down to it, you can see it. Like, look. Oh, my God. Look now, at Loki this. season two is down from what Loki season one was. Nobody which I'm surprised cares. by because I thought people would be in for that Loki okay, at least. Here's what happens. When people check out from a franchise, they check out completely. Even if you get thrown a bone every once in a while. I'm looking at Star Wars. I haven't watched Andor. I have no interest in watching Andor. I probably would have a couple of years ago. I would have checked it out because I like Rogue One, right? Uh, one of the few Disney Star Wars things I actually liked. Most people didn't know Andor exists. They did not care Andor existed because it came after Book of Boba Fett. The problem with the Andor 2 was, while it was good, it was for a specific type of audience because it was very far removed from other Star Wars content. Yeah, yeah. And and it doesn't matter. That's the thing. It doesn't matter how good or bad something in a franchise that's overall bad is. People are going to be leery. Like, no, I got burnt on She-Hulk. I got burnt on on Secret Invasion. I got burnt on Ms. Marvel or Falcon Winter or whatever. I got burnt on these shows. I'm not watching them. And that affects your box office too because their whole thought process here was these shows are basically commercials for the movies and the movies are commercials for Disney+. Plus. And people are checking out from the whole thing. They're like, it's it's overwhelming and underwhelming. It's too much subpar content. This this chart's misleading too because we're not telling you about how many people watch it. They're talking about the number of view minutes viewed. And like She Hulk show is four billion. It's over other things, but it had nine episodes comparatively speaking to ones that had six. Yeah, so you can you can argue successfully. Loki has been the most popular thing, obviously, and then uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier. You know, six episodes it had that many. But then you get down here where it's nine episodes, only two billion. Right. But I'm saying She Hulk, so it was four billion. It's really good. It had three more episodes, and they're going by watch time only. Okay. So neither one of these these upcoming shows are going to be big. Oh my God, guys. Do you remember that deaf girl? Do you remember that deaf girl from Hawkeye? She's getting her own show. You don't remember her? Okay, well, she's real important, but she's getting her own show. that was show. another show that they rumored they had to reshoot a whole bunch of it because it didn't work. It didn't work. Nobody wants the show. Now, Agatha, what is it? It's not, what is it called now? It's not Coven of Chaos. It's something else know. now. They keep changing the dark, name. Dark Witches of Diaries. The, dark Hold Diaries. The Dark like Hold Diar- Princess um, Diaries or So, some yeah, shit. that's yeah. coming next next year. And that one might get some views because people were interested in her. But Remember that one song? That one bad guy from WandaVision? Yeah, the one song you see on TikTok and stuff? Yeah, we're going to do a whole show of that with mm-hmm. catchy musical numbers. 
Because that's what Marvel's all about. Right. You know? <laughs> like, what the hell? This anyway. Is, nobody cares. Even Hawkeye. I like Jeremy Renner. I wanted to like Hawkeye. I didn't think Kate Bishop was completely insufferable. I thought she was okay. And I didn't think they completely diminished Hawkeye. But it was boring. Moon Knight was boring. Moon Knight should not be boring. Moon Knight was a pretty cool comic. It shouldn't have been boring, but it was boring. It was a chore to get through. And the one thing Marvel can't be is boring. Well, the problem they're having is with these TV shows, they're trying to stretch it out so long to make it a, a series. And some of them should have just, just been movies. But they knew that they weren't going to do well at the box office. But the thing is, you know? so but they make it into a series and they stretch it too far. Where if they had just did it as a film, you know, it might have done better. Um, but they're trying to stretch it out as far as they can stretch it. And you know, don't even, don't even run with that. They're going to have to, not. <laughs> they're going to have to go back. I mean, look, if they really want to fix Disney and they really want to fix Marvel and Star Wars, they're, they're going to have to basically just pull the plug on everything that they're doing, everything they have planned, which they're not going to do. And just be like, you know what? 10 years. We're pausing this shit for 10 years. They won't because of the investors. They can't. Because they, yeah. They you can't. know, I, if it, I would be like, if, if it was, if you didn't have to answer to investors, and this is one of the biggest problems with these corporations is they got to answer to the investors. If you're a privately owned company and do whatever you think is best for the company long, long run, I would say we fucked up. Let's not do this for Disney eight. never admits mistakes. Yeah. Let's not do this for eight or 10 years. Let's really think about how we have to do it going out. Let's not think about the marketing and the brand synergy and whatever. It's like, let's get people in here to make good, a couple of good solid movies and try to reinvigorate these franchises. And then if it takes off, then we can think about like, just think about like Disney has made more Star Wars than George Lucas has at this point. But it's all shitty Star Wars. Yeah, it's not. It's not good. Well, um, for the most part. For the well, most the part. Thing about the thing about the Marvel thing is, they're saying like you know, usually with these things, you do a, a pilot, you have showrunners, you have an overall story, you have things planned out, and they're just busy trying to get it done. That they just like basically, like, you know, one person's ever seeing all the stuff, and then we're gonna somehow make it work. And yeah. then oh look, it's not working, so we got to spend more money to redo it. And it's just, it's just a mess. Yeah, the whole thing. You can't fix. You can't fix this. You can't. Fix it. You and post. can't unscrew the pregnant lady. Well, you can. But we're not gonna. No. That's another joke. We're not. Somebody gonna else make. can. You can. Yeah. We're we're okay. So let's 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 end this video. Let's end this video. Uh, are we done? Yes. I feel bad. Anyway. <laughs> Please subscribe for more pop culture news, views, and rants, guys. We'll talk later. Bye.